fluidized sand bed. Uh, for people that make ceramic shell molds, you know about this. We dip the wax structure in the liquid slurry, and then we uh, we coat it with uh, sand, like so. These little molds are easy. I can hold them with one hand and sprinkle the sand. It's no problem. With the bigger ones, they're heavy and they're fragile. And I've had some failures. I can't hold them with one hand. So I'm going to uh, try to make a fluidized sand bed, which will enable me to dip them vertically. And uh, that's what this video is about. Basically, fluidized sand bed is just a container for the sand, or stucco as it's called with air coming up from the bottom. It kind of boils it, it loosens it up. You can stick your items into the sand without damaging them. Uh, kind of turns it into like a sandstorm in the desert. Um, other than that, you won't find much information on the internet on how to build them. So I'm kind of winging this and I hope it'll work. Uh, to distribute the air, I built these little, what I call pucks. So plywood bottom, got wooden side like a donut, and for the top, I needed something that would support the weight of the sand, but enable air to go out. Um, I couldn't use plywood with a bunch of holes drilled in it or a piece of steel with the whole holes cut in it, but I had this uh, expanded metal, so I think it fit the bill. And I was a little concerned about the expanded metal cutting the fabric. I'm going to cover this with fabric. Put a nipple in the side. No, I put a, a coupling in the side. There'll be a nipple from here coming out the bottom of the drum. So air will come in, come out the top, disturb the sand, and that's it. It's pretty simple, pretty simple deal. I have left to do is cover this with a fabric. And I'm not really sure what type of fabric to use, but one, air has to go through it, which doesn't narrow it down very much, and two, um, the sand can't go back through it or this will fill with sand. So using those two parameters, I'm going to grab something from the shop and I'm, I'm going to go with it. We'll see what happens. So sacrificing a good t-shirt. Oh, I hate to do that. This is what we're going to do. Put it around there. And I'm going to clamp it the old fashioned way. Double tie wire. The edges neatly trimmed and I put another double wire on there um, I think it'll hold keep in mind that there'll be sand packed all around here so probably it would uh, almost stay without being tied but uh, I tied it pretty well and now we're going to drop it into the basin into the drum I have a hole drill should match this hole I fit. Okay. Okay, so we're finished. Just need to hook it up to air, cross our fingers, see if it'll work. Okay, had a little setback. When I screwed the, uh, the pipe nipple into this um, male adapter, it uh, turned into wood. I had it uh, installed with silicone and it was kind of a press fit, so I thought it would hold. But the silicone never cured. I guess it didn't get air. It couldn't get air, so it didn't cure. So they slipped. So I took both of them apart, and I'm mixing up some epoxy, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna fix it. Epoxy is like herpes; it's forever. I don't think it'll come out again. Fittings have been reglued with epoxy, and I put some screws. To make sure that it didn't move. Um, another good t-shirt, taking it for the cause. This is where I sent my daughter to college. This is a very expensive t-shirt.
A little tie wire tip, if you ever buy a roll of tie wire from the Home Depot or whatever. Tape the outside with duct tape before you cut the little bands and then you pull the wire from the inside and it never gets tangled up until it's completely used up. It's a great is how I make a, a twisty top. Get the length you need to go around, double it, add some extra, so that's going to be the middle point. Pull it out. Put the end in the drill, pull it. Now you have a very strong wire. Okay, this is the procedure. You dip it in a ceramic shell. This is suspend a slurry. Let it drip. Make sure all the surfaces are coated.